I, I praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, this is my first time in Africa. Ah, wonderful. First time in Kenya. Welcome. 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 I wanted to come. Yes. And uh, I'm very excited too that I'll go to Nakuru Park because I, I watch, you know, animals on National Geographic all the time. <laughs> and I and I like to go to see the animals in action. <laughs> I, you know, I, I've gone to different countries. Yes. My heart is for revival. Yes. My heart is, is for that everyone can be trained to be used by God. Yes. That's the characteristic of my teaching yes. and my training. Mostly I'm a trainer, a revivalist. Mostly I want to help people to really, you know, have a close relationship with the Lord and enjoy the presence of God and and uh, take care of different problems and then to be used by God and also raise up other people. Yes. And every week now I have training in Hong Kong to train people how to serve the Lord and some of my students came with me. And I go to different countries and I want to do that. Because when, you know, one thing about uh, Christians is one Christian is devoted to the Lord, loving the Lord, have a good relationship with the Lord and be willing to be used by God. This one person can have more influence than 100 lazy Christians. Yeah. Is that true? Nice. Or even 1,000. 1,000 Christians who don't do anything, just sit and listen. They won't be able to have so much influence as one influential Christian who enjoy the presence of God and who love God and serve God. And my goal is to raise up more people like that. Do you want your church members to be like this? Yes. yes. To be serving God and to be used by yes. God. Yes. And so my training is mostly, mostly like this. Now even in my revival meetings tonight, I will still do training. Yeah. I always want to help people to be able to build up ourselves and build up other people. Yes. Now my first session is the basis of all my teachings. It's about living in the love of God and, and living in the joy of the Lord. It's very important. Actually, just with the little time we have, I won't be able to finish, but I just introduce it. And then when you hear it and you like it, you can bring more friends to come. And you can also try to use it in your church. It's very important that we can help people to live in the love of God, to enjoy the love of God, and also rejoice all the time. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, in 1998, when an evangelist lay hand on me, at that time, I have already been a pastor for 15 years, but I never experienced the power of the Holy Spirit like that. When the evangelist lay hand on me, I felt power like electricity enter me. Zoom. And then I felt love so strong. All the way came into me. I felt a strong love and I cried for a long time. And then I said, oh, I never knew that I can have that relationship with God. I never knew that I can experience God like that. So I said, I want to keep that relationship. So that night I went home, it was very late. I kept praying for a long time. And every day after that, I kept praying. And even when I'm walking, when I'm doing other things, when I'm preaching, I'm loving God at the same time. And one day I cried out to God. I said, Lord Jesus. And then immediately power went through me. I said, wow, this is wonderful. I had experienced an immediate response of God. And I cried again, Lord Jesus, again. <laughs> the power came through me. And later I experienced the joy of the Lord. Every time I think of Jesus, the joy would just flow out. Every time. And I want to help people to be able to live in the love and the joy of the Lord so that we can enjoy the relationship with God, so that we can pray for people and people can experience healing and joy and love. I pray for many people, people who are very sad and burdened. And they can rejoice and laugh. <laughs> and, and it's a gift. But it has to first come from knowing and living in the love of God. It's very important. So I will talk a little bit about living in the love of God and enjoying the love of God this morning. And this is a very important teaching. And I hope you will 
take notes maybe, and also remember the detail and apply it in your way. Now we all know that God, for God so loved the world, right? We all know that. But how many Christians are really touched by the love of God all the time? How many Christians really believe that, oh, I'm loved by God, I, oh, I'm so precious in the sight of God, God is so wonderful, God loves me so much. Not many Christians are like that. Actually, I have counseled many Christians and also many pastors. I went to different places and counseled lay people and pastors, and many people say, oh, I have burdens. I have problems. Oh, it's so difficult. My life is difficult. Oh, when I pray, I, it's hard to get the strength of God. It's hard to serve in joy. It seems like service, serving God is like burden. Oh, church members are not changed. They don't love God so much. So many Christians live in burdens. They, many Christians don't live in the love of God. Actually, we are loved by God. But sometimes we don't realize the degree of the love. Let me use an illustration. Our mothers took care of us when we were young, right? Yeah. Our mothers did all kinds of wonderful things for us. How many mothers are here? Okay. Mothers, you know how much you take care of your babies, right? From food, changing the diapers, when they get sick, how to take care of them, and worry about them all the time, think about them all the time, and then also later, uh, you know, teach them how to be a good person, how to love Jesus, a lot of things, right? So mothers put in a lot of energy to the, to the baby and to the children, right? Yes. But let me ask you this question. How many of your children really know that you love them so much? Most children, they say, oh, my mother do this, and I mean, even I know some children like that. The mother give them soup, and they say, why do you always give me soup? I don't want soup. Why do you want me, want me, want me to eat fish? Why do you want me to eat vegetable or fruit? I don't like this kind of food. I like french fries. I like hamburger. I don't like that kind of food. Have you seen children like that? When the mothers are nice, nice to them, they don't appreciate the mother. They, they don't see the love of the mother. But if they realize how much the mothers or our wives or the people around us, think of every day they take care of the, your food, cooking. You know, cooking is not easy, right? It's hot, right? In the kitchen, it's hot. And you have to buy the food and fix the food. And if the food is not nice, the family members are not happy, right? So the, the wives have to do all kinds of things. And after eating, then she have to wash the dishes. But uh, for me, I wash the dishes with my wife. And I do a lot of chores with my wife. I enjoy the time with my wife. But I know that many men don't wash dishes. <laughs> And we don't think of how much our wives love us and take care of us. We don't think of how much the people around us love us. Do we think about the, their love all the time? Most people don't, right? Let me show you my wife. Actually, I have my wife's picture with me everywhere. I'll first show you my picture here. I, it might be hard for you to see. It might be hard for you to see. but. I really want to build a loving relationship. Now that's something about being a strong Christian and a minister to please God. We want to have a healthy marriage, we want to have healthy relationship with people, and we want to have a healthy relationship with God, and we can bless people, right? We want to take care of everything in our lives. Now when I, I'm sorry, thank you. When I think of my wife and my mother and the people around me, I think of their love. And when we think about their love, we say, wow, it's so wonderful to have this person. Like my wife. Let me tell you something about my wife. She would plan, you know, if, if I go on a trip, she would check out on ahead of time the weather there, and then she would, uh, you know, uh, plan what kind of clothing I would bring. And then uh, she would check the airlines, uh, is it on time? And she would stay with me all the time when she's in Hong Kong. She know I'm landing 
And then when she hears me, hears me on the phone, she's very happy. And when I go home, sometimes she comes all the way to the airport to pick me up. So, you know, sometimes, I mean, some people just wait for the husband to come home, but she would <laughs> try all the time to, you know, to pick me up and do all kinds of nice things to me. Every Tuesday when I have the training, um, my wife always came to pick me up or she stayed in a meeting. Sometimes she's very busy, but she would came, come to pick me up. Now when I say this, what I want to say is, when I realize how much she loves me, then I appreciate her. And I would say how blessed I am to have such a wife, and I would love her, and I would respond to her love, right? This is normal and healthy. Now I'd like to ask you to think about God. How much God has done to us? How much God has done for us? I want to say this, most people live under the law since childhood. It's always people saying, you didn't do well, you didn't do your homework, you didn't uh, work hard, uh, you're not, not good. Have you heard words like this all the time? Mm -hmm. And when you uh, become a pastor, your members say, Pastor, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, uh, you didn't greet me, uh, you forgot about me. Have you heard words like that? Always requirement, right? Always requirement. How many of your church members would come to you and say, Pastor, you're so nice. You spend so much time on me. Wow, you help me all the time. You brought me to Jesus. I really appreciate you. How many of you have heard words like this all the time? Not too much, right? That's human nature. Human nature is most people live under the law. Husbands always tell the wives, you didn't do this. You didn't uh, cook the food well. I don't like your food. Things like this, right? And the wife said to the husband, Ah, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, oh, you didn't clear the garbage, or something like that. Always negative things. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. Think about yourself. Do you have thoughts like this all the time? I didn't do well. Some people think about God, they say, Oh Lord, I didn't do a good job. Oh Lord, I'm not a good Christian, I've sinned. So a lot of times we think, we use the law on us. Now, the law is from God. It's good. But also, the love of God is greater. The center of the Bible is the love of God. Now, for me, both the love and the law of God are very important. I, I, I love the love of God and I love the law of God. But when I think about how much God loves me, then all the time, I say, I'm so blessed. God has blessed me in so many ways. Let's look at some passages. Isaiah 49, 15 to 16. You probably know this verse very well. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. So here it talks about a mother will not forget the baby. Now, how many of you mothers have forgot your, forgotten your baby and left the baby at the grocery store or in the bus? Uh, when you go on a train, you forgot the baby. Oh, have you forgotten something on a bus? Yes. But have you forgotten your baby? No. No way, right? You will not forget your baby. You might forget, one time I forgot my tennis racket. I had two tennis rackets, and I took one, and I left one day on a bus. That we might forget things, but we don't forget the baby. Because God has put that love in us. Why do we have the love toward our babies? It's from God. If you go to Nakuru National Park, you know the animals take good care of the babies. Even leopards, tigers, lions. They take good care of the babies. Birds, many, any, many animals take good care of the babies because God loves. And so when He created animals, animals have love toward the babies. And humans have love, not only to babies, to our friends, right? Do you, do you enjoy your friendship with your friends? Yes. That we have the ability to enjoy friendship because God enjoys friendship. God thinks of us all the time. 
God always remembers. Now, how do we know God remembers? This verse says that, can a mother forget the baby at her breast? Even if she forgets, I will not forget you. Now, that it says that, no matter what, God will not forget you, even when we sin, even when we are weak. Have you noticed that? Let me ask you, how many of you have experienced weakness? Or maybe you sin, including me. Maybe you did not pray much. Maybe you did something to offend God. Has that, has that happened to you? Yes. When that happened, did God forget you? No. Did God say, I'm going to forget you. I don't want you anymore. Go away. No. God will speak to your heart, right? Yes. God will touch your heart. Come back, my son, my daughter. Come back. How many of you, when you worship and pray to God, and God touch your heart and say, Lord, I have not had a close relationship with you. Please forgive my sins. It's God moving in our heart to let us realize that we have not had a good relationship with God. So God will not just forsake you. God will come and reach out to you and speak to you and touch your heart. And many people said when they praise and worship, they felt touched by the love of God. How many of you have experienced that before? That you're touched by the love of God when you pray or when you worship? That is God coming to you. He has not forgotten you. Let me ask you, when God has not forgotten us so many times, do you remember God all the time? For the whole day, how many minutes do you think of God? Now most people, when they get up, oh, I have to rush to work, I have to do this, I have to do that. Even when they prepare a sermon, I have to write a sermon, I have to do this, do that. That many Christians and even pastors sometimes forget God. We remember the sermon. We think about a sermon, but we are not thinking about God all the time. And we are not thinking about the love of God all the time. Now God has talked to me like this. He has revealed this to me. That when I experience the love of God, the Holy Spirit, when I experience the Holy Spirit, and every time when I pray, now I can experience His joy, His power, and His love. Every time I pray, I can feel love over me. I can feel God's love. And I would say, God, you are so good. You always come to serve me. You always come to minister to me. You always come to touch my heart. Because I experience the joy of the Lord all the time. Sometimes I said, is it just from my heart? Just, I'm getting used to laughing. So I said, okay, don't think of laughter, don't think of joy, just think of Jesus. <laughs> when I just think of Jesus, the joy will come. So I reached that conclusion. God is full of joy. God is full of love. So when I pray to Him, His joy and His love will come to me. When I think about that, what do I think? I would say, God, you are so good. You think about me all the time. You love me all the time. You speak to me all the time. You touch my heart all the time. So I think about all the things God has done in order for me to experience His help and love. I use an illustration again, like your wife or your mother, prepare you food. When you eat the food, don't just say, oh, thank you for the nice food. Think about how she has to buy the food, choose the food you like, cook it, make sure it's your taste, and then serve it. And then when you are happy with the food, she's very happy. And so when husband say to the wife and say, thank you for the food, the wife will be very happy. And then afterwards, she'll wash the dishes and do all kinds of you know, service to us. When we think about the love of the people around us, we would, we would say, we are blessed, aren't we? And we have God who loves us more than anyone else in the whole world. Think about our conversion when we were saved. How many people God used to bring you to Jesus? What opportunity did God use to bring you to Jesus? What happened? Think about the process. When I thought about the process when I became a Christian, 
I can think of a number of people who help in the process. Can you think of a number of people? And these people were all touched by God to help me, to bring me to Jesus. And also when I think about my spiritual life, in the past my spiritual life had weak points. But in those times, God has not forsaken me. God has not punished me. But He had talked to me and touched my heart and then revived my heart. And I say, God, you're so wonderful. What I want to do is to try to put this in your heart to say, God, what have you done for me? To remember all these things all the time so that when we think of God, we really appreciate Him. Let us look at another verse. Psalm 139, verse 5. Psalm 139, verse 5. I'll read it. If you cannot find me, find it quickly, you can just write it down. You have, you have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hands upon me. So you are behind me and before me, in front of me, and you lay your hands upon me. What it says is that God is serving us all the time. If I take this pulpit to be you, God is in front of you and behind you. He's around you and He's laying His hand upon you to bless you. Is that true? When you pray to God, you find His presence come to you. How many of you experience a peace come upon you when you pray. Even when you don't pray, you find God speak to you, right? Yes. And how many of you experience comfort to the body? When you pray, it's like floating. Oh. <laughs> the experience is, oh, it's like in heaven. I experience this all the time. This is God serving us. So God serves us all the time. He is in front of us and behind us. He is laying His hand upon us to bless us all the time. Now I know that something has happened in Africa. That the Americans have come and took many people from Africa to be slaves to America. And also other people have taken slaves from Africa. And when these slaves go to the country, they have to serve the master. When I say, when the pastor say, come, they'll come. And I saw one movie about the black slaves in America. And there was an old man sitting on a chair, and there were some slave children, the children of the slaves, running by. And then the old man said to the child, lie down. And he would lie down, and then he would take, pull the clothing up, and then put his feet on the stomach of the child mm -hmm. to keep warm. Have you heard of this before? When the master did this to the baby, little slave child, he cannot do anything. If the child say no, he'll be punished. So the slave has to do anything according to the wish of the master, right? Yes. It's not fair, right? It's not. Let me ask you this question. Is God our slave? Is God our slave? No. no he is our master. Yes. He is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. But He serves us like a slave. He is in front of you all the time, behind you all the time, laying His hand upon you, touch your heart all the time, guide you and speak to you all the time. When you think of this, is your heart touched? God loves me so much. And I did not think about it. It's just like so many people did not think about the love of the mother or the wife. And they just take it for granted. They just say, that's their duty to take care of me. But they don't think of the love of the mother or the wife to take care of them. When you think about their love, you say, I'm so blessed. And when we think about the love of God, we say, I'm so blessed to have a God like that. Now, from these two verses and many other verses, what conclusion can we draw? Just now we have read two verses that God will not forget us, 
And second, God is behind us and behind, uh, in front of us and lay His hand on us and bless us. So God is blessing us all the time and doing all kinds of things to us all the time. When we think about all the good things about God, then we say, I'm loved by God all the time. I'm, I'm a blessed person. I'm precious in the sight of God. I'm very important in the sight of God. And then we say, I can enjoy His love all the time. Let me tell you, I enjoy God's love all the time. But many people are blocked by one thing. Actually, actually many things. But one thing that blocks many people is suffering. When they suffer, they say, God doesn't love me. God let me suffer. Let me ask you, does suffering come from God or come from sin? Suffering came from sin, came from Adam's sin and came from our sin. And so we all suffer. But God wants to save us from this suffering and bless us, right? God wants to bless us. But a lot of times people say, I'm suffering. God is not loving me. God is not helping me. But actually, God is helping you. Let me ask you, in your suffering, have you noticed God's hand to bless you? So He's blessing you and you say, God, you're so wonderful. Even when I'm suffering, it doesn't mean you don't love me. Even when I suffer, you are blessing me. You are helping me. Have you experienced God helping you to get out of the suffering? Yes. To have joy and strength. Yes. So every time when we experience this, try to remember God and think of His love. Like Peter. When Jesus wanted to wash his feet, he said, By no means can you wash my feet. But then Jesus said, If I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. But then Peter said, Then you wash my whole body. Can we respond like that? Oh Jesus, I want you to bless my whole person. I appreciate your love. I really like your love. I really, I'm so blessed. Let me tell you, I always think about all the things God has done and I think about them over and over and over again so that my heart is all filled with the love of God. For instance, before I, I was a Christian, when I was about 10 years old, one time in a dark place, I didn't realize that I was not wearing my shoe and I stepped on a mouse tail. How do I know it's a mouse tail? Because I heard the squeak of a mouse and then I felt my toe being bitten and I touched it, there was blood and I know that it was a mouse. Bitten by a mouse can be deadly. There are all kinds of germs in a mouse. But as a child, I didn't do anything. I could have died. I did not do anything. I did not even tell my family members. But I got over it. So God saved me from that. And I said, God, you're so wonderful. Before I became a Christian, you love me. And one time, my brother was holding a pair of scissors. And I played with him, and then I hit the, the scissors hit my nose. If it hit a little bit to the right side or left side, I would be blind today. And I said, God, thank you. I have my eyes today. Thank you, God. You're so loving. You protected me in that accident. Three times, I almost died in an accident. And one time, my car and the other person's car was heading toward each other. And there was no way out because I was trying to pass. And I really didn't realize the car came so quickly. And then it was too late to get back. And I said at that time, Jesus, I didn't know I have to come to you so quickly. I thought I'm going to die. Okay. But in the last moment, there's no way out. But for some reason, the car has a way to get out. And I go by safely. And I said, Lord, thank you for my life. That I can be alive today. That I can serve God is a blessing. Any day I can serve God is a blessing. And I thank God for this. He is behind me and in front of me. He's laying his hand on me and protecting me. Have you experienced things like this? Yes. Do you remember this many times? Do you tell people about it? Yes. And one time I was pulling a garage door mm -hmm. and my hand, my fingers were caught. 
in a garage door, and I felt pain for a few months. And I said, if, if, if I pull a little harder, I would have lost these three fingers. You know, I play the keyboard, I play guitar, and I play tennis. If I don't have these three fingers, it would be very different. Every time I look at these three fingers, thank God. You save these three fingers for me. It's your love. Because you know my suffering, you know my needs, you know my difficulties, and you help me right there. Yes. Now, if you think about God's love all the time, would you all say that God really loves me? Would you say that God really loves you all, right? Yes. Then you say, I'm loved by God. I'm such a precious person in God's sight. Yeah. And then every day you can enjoy God. Now, how can you enjoy God? Have you noticed when you pray, oh, Jesus. Have you noticed that you feel comfort? That is from God's love. Yes. Have you experienced peace? That's from God's love. Have you been touched by God? That's from God's love. All the experiences we have, or the excitement, or zeal, or fire of the Holy Spirit, all came from God. But so many times we experience it, and then we just thank God, and then we don't think about it. When we think more about what God has done, that He would put His love into us, He put His joy into us, He put His peace into us, He put His comfort into us. So every time when you come to Him, it's very comfortable. One time I prayed for someone who is a drug addict. I prayed for him and then he said this to me. Wow, when you pray for me, I feel more comfort than when I took drugs. <laughs> that feel comfort over the body stronger than when he took drugs. Do you experience this? So God is so loving. But so many Christians don't think about the love of God and forget, forget about God's love and don't respond to God's love. There are different levels that we respond to God's love. First is that we believe. First we know, we know God's love. The second level, you can write this down. First we know God's love. So from different things you know God's love. From the Bible you know God's love. The second is you believe God really loves me. Now some Christians don't believe that God loves them. They say, God loves other people better. God loves the pastor, not me. Have you heard people like this? They said, God loves someone else, not me. But actually, God sees each person as a very special person. Can you say to the person next to you, you are very special in the sight of God. God loves you very much. You are in God's heart. So the first, second level is belief. And the third level is believe strongly. What, is, what do I mean? Some people, they believe normally, but when they suffer, they don't believe. When they are sick, they say, God doesn't love me now. When they face difficulties, they say, God doesn't love me now. So that's the next level. And then the, the other level is to experience God's love that when you have a close relationship with Him, you experience Him when you come close to Him, when you pray, when you worship. And then fifthly, you also experience His love in daily life. Everything you see, you see, is God's love. Everything I see, like the flowers, the air. Now, close your eyes, relax, take a few deep breaths. Relax your body. Take a few deep breaths. Do you feel comfort? Mm -hmm. Even breathing brings us comfort. Mm -hmm. Isn't it wonderful? Ah, yes. And drinking water. <laughs> Does it bring comfort? Sure. And you say, God shows His love in water, in air, in nature, in people. When you hold people's hand, it's warm, right? Yes. You feel good, right? Sure. So everything you see is from God. Even this. 
cell phone, what does cell phone have to do with God? It's God who created the material. And God created, gave people wisdom to invent. And also God created waves so that we can send messages with waves, with radio signals. So when you think about God, clothing came from cotton and other material God created. Without cotton, you know, just God used cotton. God created cotton and we can make clothing. Every little thing, you look at around you, glass, it came from sand, from silicon. Everything you look at came from God. Our eyes, our hands are wonderful. Without a thumb, very hard to wear a tie, right? Yeah. <laughs> Without a thumb. Yes, true. So many wonderful things. Our ears can hear mu music. And the birds sing so beautifully. All of these are from the love of God. You can see the love of God where? You can write this down. First, in nature. You can see God's love and experience God's love in nature. Second, the redemption of Jesus. The Son of God became sin and became cursed for us on the cross and died for us. It's great, great love. The Son of God did not have to come to this world to save us. Third, from the Bible. There are many Bible verses that talk about the love of God. But many people read it and have no feelings. And fourthly, we can experience God's love when we come close to God. Have a close relationship with God. And also in a daily life, you can experience God's love. Now when we know God's love, we can go a higher level of appreciation, believing, and motivated by the love of God. Now why do I go to different countries? Like last night, it was not easy for us because there was mosquitoes. Oh, mosquitoes. <laughs> and we have a mosquito net, but the net has gaps. <laughs> and a mosquito came in. I killed about 15 mosquitoes inside a mosquito net. I killed about 40 or 50 mosquitoes last night. And so last night I did not have much sleep. But why still I want to go to different places? In some places, the restrooms smell very bad. I don't know, you probably have gone to places. The restrooms smell very bad. I still go there because I'm motivated by the love of God. I hope we all live in the love of God. We are motivated by the love of God and say, Lord, I want to be used by you. And I hope that everyone you bring to Jesus, everyone you help disciple, you will tell them about the love of God so that they're touched by the love of God. Now when you hear me talk about the love of God, do you feel touch in your heart? Yes. Do you feel, oh, God loves me so much and I didn't know it. And I didn't think about it. And I didn't respond to Him. And I did not, I'm not motivated by Him to give my life to Jesus. You know, I'm 64. Okay, 64. 64 years old. Now for mo most people, 64, time of retirement. For me, by no, by no means, I will retire now. How about 70? No. I want to live longer, just 70, six years only. I want to serve God more. Amen. How about 80? 18 years, still not long enough. For me, I want to serve God more. I want to bless more people. My life is for God. My money is for God. It doesn't matter if I suffer a little bit. It doesn't matter. What matters is I can bless more people and also raise you up to be blessing other people by, your, by the love of God inside you. I hope we all live in the love of God. So every time we pray, you can declare the love of God. Now, could you all rise together? I'll lead you in a prayer of grace that God has taught me. And you can say after me, every, every sentence I say you can say after me, but say it from your heart. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. And try to say it with the feeling I have too. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Lord Jesus. You love me so much. You love me so much. You love me all the time.
time. You love me all the time. You're in front of me. You are in front of and me. And behind me. And behind me. You are laying your hand on me. You are laying your hand on me. You never forget me. You never forget me. And I'm very important in your sight. I'm very important in your sight. I'm precious in your sight. I'm precious in your sight. I'm loved by you all the time. I'm loved by you all the time. Your love is so precious. Your love is so precious. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Oh, I want to respond to your love. I want to respond to your love. I want to live in your love. I want to get lost in your love. I want to enjoy your love. I want to enjoy your love. I want to be motivated by your love. I want to be motivated by your love. It's so wonderful to be loved by you. It is so wonderful to be loved by you. So wonderful to be a beloved child of God. So wonderful to be a beloved child of God. I want to bring this love to other people. I want to bring this love to other people. Oh Lord Jesus, forgive me. Oh Lord Jesus, forgive me. For complaining to you so many times. For complaining to you so many times. For not responding to your love so many times. For not responding to your love so many times. Help us to be touched by you. Help us to be touched by you. Now, at this point, I want to explain what I just did. You could keep your eyes closed. Just now, first I declare God's love. God is behind me and in front of me. God is laying his hand on me. God is loving me. God has a wonderful plan in my life. God wants to do great things in my life. God, I'm precious in God's sight. All of this are declaring the promises of God. Mm -hmm. And then respond to God's love by saying, Lord, I love you. I follow you. You are my life. You are my everything. You are my strength. My, you are my everything. Mm -hmm. I am you are mine, and I'm yours. I'm, you are okay, mine. right now I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Yes. Lord, help us to be touched by your love. Mm -hmm. Would the pianos, the pianos play the key of C. Oh, oh there's no sound. No sound. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, please keep your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. Yet Jesus loves me. Yeah.
We want to anoint you with the love of God. Come forward if you want to pray. Lay hand on you. For the love of God to come upon you. Not just to know His love, but to experience His love. 